Villa fans, we'd love to hear from you on this. 03717 The general consensus that I can see on social media and people that are texting and, and sending messages in and calling in is that Villa fans are really excited about this. Um, I was thinking about it earlier on, Ali McCoy, because I don't think they've had a manager with um, his record in terms of what he's won recently. Um, for at least the last decade. So this is a, a man that comes in, a decorated manager. It didn't work out for him at Arsenal. But another thing we spoke about earlier on, Stuart, was it was almost, it, it was a very difficult environment to go in at Arsenal. You're going in after an absolute mm. legend in Arsene Wenger. And he had a dressing room that was quite toxic. And there was a lot of unpicking to do, which we saw done by, by um, Mikel Arteta. The signings he made, I, I wasn't a massive fan of those and they didn't last very long. Um, but what did you think about the football that he played and why do you think he would be a good fit for Aston Villa, Stuart? Um, well, it was a reasonable, you know, Danny said it himself, a decent uh, brand of football. But as I say, the, the end period at the time when he left Arsenal, it, it wasn't particularly good. Um <sighs> I think sometimes if you're Aston Villa with the expectation of Aston Villa and I go back probably a couple of years ago here mm. is that there was an expectation there that, that they're going to start challenging for the top six and whatever. That's not materialised at the moment. If the fans are turning around and are very happy with the appointment, I think the owners in some ways sort of exonerate themselves mm -hmm. from, from their recruitment process at that stage, you know. I'd, we spoke off air and I was talking about even the likes of Sean Dyche. I would love to Sean Dyche to, to be given the opportunity. I mean, if you if you offer a direct comparison, at Newcastle, they didn't want Eddie Howe in there. Yep. And Eddie sat fourth in the league at this Great moment point. in time. And, Great point. You know, and sometimes what's right under your nose, <clears throat> you, you can belittle a little bit and think they're not particularly good at their job, but they, mm. I'm telling you, they are. Do you think you that's know? a job that he would have wanted, Sean? Hundred percent, I would think so. Yeah. What a fantastic job Aston Villa job is, you know what yep. I mean? Brilliant fan base, brilliant football club, great training ground, mm. good squad of players. Um, the Mirror, I was reading The Mirror this morning and uh, there's a piece that they did online and they were talking about um, one player that might not be very happy to see Unai Emery is Emi Martinez, the goalkeeper, mm. because when he was at Arsenal, he didn't get the opportunities and, and I remember there was, a, there was a kind of post suggesting that he was looking forward to Unai Emery leaving the club. Mm. Um, so it's funny the way that football works, isn't it? Coming back round in a circle. But since then, Emmy has, has more than proved himself um, for Arsenal, won the FA Cup with him, didn't he? And then going to Aston Villa. And he was captain for the last game. When you go into a club as a, as a new coach, a new head coach, what are the main decisions that you have to take immediately? Uh, immediate is often recruitment. You know, um, it, that won't be the case at this moment in time. But he'll have one eye on the January transfer window. Mm. Are this squad of players evenly balanced? Is it the type of... Has he got at his disposal the amount of players? And, and the first thing you do is say, right, let me have a look at the squad. Give everyone the opportunity. And then from there, you're looking at um, what do I need for the next two, three transfer windows to mm. improve what I've already got? You know, whichever way you look at it. I think he's fortunate because he's going into uh, a squad of players. You don't think that... <clears throat> I don't know what Ali thinks, but I, I think they're a good squad of players. That, as I say, their result at the weekend probably proved that a little mm. bit. They just needed a little bit of tinkering, potentially, and a, a new face, and then all of a sudden things change. Does he also get the, get the um, benefit of having, what, maybe three games, I think, it's left in the Premier League, and then there's a bit of a break with the World Cup? So you kind of... There's a milestone, isn't there, Ali? You get to that point, and then yeah. you get a month to... Even though some of your players might not be there... What, what, is that I don't benefit? think that's a bad idea, a, a bad thing for him rather, mm. I, I, at all. I, I agree with Stuart. You know, Emery seems to me he'll be one of these guys until he takes his first training session on Tuesday. You can guarantee he'll be sitting watching Villa's games from the start of the season all the way through. He'll be looking through the team, he'll know his players inside out. He will have, Stuart's right, everyone, he'll give everyone a clean slate, but I would imagine he'll have a rough idea. You know, <clears throat> particularly the way he wants to play. He'll look at his players. You know, as I say, he, he, he'll know the pros and cons. It'll be interesting to see what he does with the team. For example, one or two of St Stephen's signings, whether it's Coutinho. These things that'll unfold probably certainly in the next window. It might be, it might be his kind of player. It might not be. All these things we'll find out in the future. But I actually don't think it's a bad thing. I don't know what Stuart thinks. I don't think it's a bad thing that he's got a couple of games and then a break for the World Cup 
you know, just to reassess the whole situation. He'll have, he'll have what will it be, four weeks now, three weeks to have a look, maybe four games to have a look, you know, two weeks in training to assess his squad and then he's got a break and then he, obviously he'll have a window, which I imagine in, the, in January that he'll want to utilise. I think it'll be brilliant for all managers, really. I think that probably the managers that have got momentum and good results going into the break won't want it to stop. <laughs> the other ones, and I think there's a lot of teams in the division that, that will really look forward to the break. Mm. From the manager's point of view, and I'll give you a coach and manager's assessment of it, it'll freshen them up a little bit. Mm-hmm. It also gives the board of directors at certain clubs, so I think they'll be looking if they're a bit you know, pushy about making a change. I think this natural break and leading into this natural break, we might see two or three uh, clubs change managers at that period. Because if I was a chairman, Mm. I would say, let's run it into this period. And if I was thinking about making a change, I wouldn't do it now. I would do it in three games' time. It is three matches Mm -hmm. um, to be played. And at that stage, if you're going to bring a new manager in, You've got the transfer window to have a good look at and, and you know, freshen mm. your players up, get some coaching in, some warm weather training potentially. It's an mm. ideal period. Aaron Danks is going to be in charge uh, this Saturday against Newcastle when they go to St James's Park. Um, it's live and exclusive on TalkSport 2 at 3 o'clock. And then Unai Emery's first couple of games, the first one in the Premier League, which is on the 6th of November, that's a Sunday, they host Manchester United. And then in the League Cup, which is the Thursday, the 10th of November, they go to Old Trafford. So he's got Man United back to back home and away Mm -hmm. in the Premier League in the EFL Cup. And then the last Premier League game that he's got before everybody breaks the World Cup is at the Amex against Brighton. And that is on the 13th of November. So that is Unai Emery's start at Aston Villa. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.